Hey, construction legends. So today we're going to talk about why not negotiating your construction contract is losing you lots of money and could potentially put you out of business in the short to medium term. So hi, my name is Kim Ren. I'm the CEO of a company called Quantum Contract Solutions. And right now in the construction industry, at the time of recording, August 2023, the last two quarters have been the worst for construction companies going out of business in almost 15 years. Now, the reason we're making this contract Content is because there are so many construction companies that are getting bullied contractually. They're losing money. These larger organizations are bringing in people to make them save costs and not pay you essentially. And so by not understanding how to play the money side of construction, you're at a severe disadvantage. This game of contracts, let's say, is being played whether you want to play it or not. And really, if you ever played someone who doesn't know how to play a game, like a board game, and then they try and play and you obviously beat them very, very easily. That's what's going on. If you don't understand how the money side of construction works, how the contracts of construction works, then ultimately you're going to put yourself in a severe disadvantage. Okay, so prior to starting uh, Quantum in 2019, I worked for most of my career on the client side. And so as part of that job, at the front end, prior to a project being awarded, we'd be tendering for lots and lots of work. So we'd be going out to civil contractors, all these different contractors, and it would be my job and my team's job to do competitive tenders with all of these companies. Now, what used to happen a lot of the time was we would get these bids and we'd go out to maybe some unknown people, people that we didn't really know that we, you know, we were recommended to go out to. And as part of that bidding process, you want to feel that these companies know what they're doing. And so oftentimes, let's say we went out to five or six different companies and we would get back a load of bids, essentially. And we'd go through the bids and obviously we'd look at them from a technical point of view and if they were qualified then we would look open up their figures essentially and so what would happen is part of the technical qualification each subcontractor has an opportunity to try and negotiate the terms of the contract or say what they don't agree with more often than not people would come back and try to negotiate certain things and you see that is the game because at that time we gave out the worst possible contract like revision one of the contract and we have backup clauses clauses, backup sections, backup articles, whatever you call them in your country, to each line item, to each thing in the contract. Different ones, like two and three different ones. And so when people would come back and negotiate, we would just move to the next one, the next one. So the, the game was that we would give them the worst one, they would come back and they would negotiate, and then we would end up negotiating a fair contract. That's how the game works. That's what you would do. If you were in their position, you would give them your best contract or your worst contract, whichever way you want to phrase it, in the hope that they agree to it or that you can negotiate a fair position. It's your starting point. Hey legend, just quickly, if you got any sort of value from this video so far, the only ask I've got of you is we don't do any advertising. We don't make any money from this channel is that you just hit the subscribe button. So other construction companies, people in construction can find the videos, save themselves money, avoid disputes and be contractually better as construction companies. Let's get back to it. Now, what often happens was as part of the five bids that we received, Received, maybe one didn't try to negotiate at all. And when you look at that package as a whole, that is an absolute red flag that they haven't tried to negotiate. It means that this is they're a smaller company or this is their first time on the big stage or the first time on a major project. And so by not negotiating, what we would look at is go, no, they're not technically qualified or it's concerning. And we'd go back, are you sure you got no comments on a contract? Yeah, yeah, we're just looking to get Alma to work. That is a red flag. And that causes us to immediately look at the previous projects they've done, scrutinize everything and look for reasons to get rid of them from the bidding process because it is our opinion that they don't know what they're doing because every proper construction company will try to negotiate. Now, so what happens a lot of times when we get new clients into quantum, their biggest objection is that I can't negotiate my contract or I don't know how to negotiate my contract or basically, oh no, it will never happen. And so from our statistics, we've been in business five years, We've done almost 4,000 contract reviews and negotiations, if not more. I don't know what the figure is right now. And our percentage is 82% of what we put forward gets accepted. Now, I'm not saying that to you know boast about quantum. What I'm saying that is to emphasize the point that if we can get 82% of what we put forward across the line as an average, then 
that leans to mean that you can definitely negotiate your contracts. And so that you can definitely try to negotiate the terms of your contract to reduce your risk. Now, the part of negotiating, kind of, why do you bother to negotiate your contracts in the first place? Well, really, if we look at it holistically, and if you want to quote to Warren Buffett, Keith Cunningham, a lot of these very famous people are always concerned about the downside. If you look at Warren's trajectory over a long period of time, he's not been a type of trader that's made like 40, 50% every year and just had these huge gains. It's always been modest increases in gains, essentially. But his whole thing was limiting the downside. He was always about choosing very, very good companies, limiting the risk because the downside is what's important. So if you're a company that's going up and up and up and growing over time and you're getting more projects and becoming a bigger organization, those increases will keep going and going and going. It's the downside. So when something happens, how bad is it going to affect your company? Is it going to be big bang where you've lost loads of money? It's going to take you five plus years to recover from this big bang, or is it just going to be a little blip that you just continue on your upward trend. So that's the general why to reduce the risk in your contract. There's so many different reasons. So the risk is linear, whether you think the risk is low or high, the risk is what it is regardless. And so it's your job to take the risk down so that if anything does happen on the project, that the outcome is not going to be so bad. And so if they're expecting you to negotiate, and if by negotiating, we know that we can definitely get the terms reduced, we can get better terms in the contract. If we look at that and we can say that, isn't it reasonable to suggest that if we do that, it's going to make a big difference to our construction company over a longer period of time? The thing is, the largest construction companies in the world do this. They have teams of contracts people constantly negotiate. If you look at the GC or main contractor on your project, they have a team that has negotiated a reasonable contract, hopefully with the owner. And so you're just doing the same. And so you shouldn't have to take on any additional over-the-top risk that's happening right now. What's happening in the industry is they're pushing risk down, down, down the chain to you guys and you're taking on all the risk. And it's you guys who are going out of business, you guys who are losing money because of this. And this doesn't have to happen because if you negotiate your contract, they're going to think that this isn't your first rodeo. You've played at this stage before. So that's the first thing. You're going to have more chance of winning that bid. The second thing is you're going to reduce the risk in your contract substantially. You're probably going to be able to get better payment terms. You're probably going to get better approval times of your change orders or your extensions of time. And ultimately, you're going to, over time, continue to rise as a construction company without any major downsides. And that's the whole point. That's why you have to negotiate your construction contracts on every single project. They want you to. They're giving you their worst contract, knowing that you're going to come back and change things. Now, the way you got to go about doing it is a little bit different. Most, if you went to a lawyer, for example, they would go through it and have tons and tons, like 40 plus departments or clarifications, as we like to call them. And some of those things don't, like they do matter, of course. But what we need to do to be successful in this negotiation is we need to choose just a few things that are very important to your company that reduce your risk by the most. If we can get those things across the line, we can appear to the client, hey, we've only got these few things. They're very important to us. Here are the reasons that they're important to us. And here's what we want to put in instead. They're very open to that. It's very easy to deal with. They think, okay, these guys know what they're doing, get that approved and you reduced most of your risk. Where if you throw the kitchen sink and try and get all of your risk reduced, it doesn't work that way. Over 4,000 contract reviews, we can see how to do it and that is the best way to approach it. So give it a go. Try to negotiate the terms on your contract. If you don't know exactly what to do, you can obviously hopefully by watching our content, you'll learn bits by bit what to negotiate. If you don't, you could go to a contracts person, you can go to a lawyer and get them to produce a document for you that lays out what your commercial principles are. That's a great way to do it. Or indeed, you could engage Quantum themselves to do it on your behalf. Whatever you need to do at the end of the day, you just need to make sure that it gets done. Part of the process in construction, you got to make sure that you do it. Hey, Construction Legends, I hope you enjoyed that. If you want more of the same, please click here to have another cool video. And we've also got a full contract negotiation training course. It's six weeks everything you need to do to negotiate your own contract. It's a playlist. Click on it, go through all the training, and it'll make you way, way better and, and allow you to sign way less riskier contracts and set yourselves up for success. Okay, so choose one of them and go, for, go forth and conquer.